You are listening to the Primitive Intelligence Podcast. Bonus episode eight, Chemtrails. Have I changed my mind? I'm your host, Kurt Zitzelman. And in this episode, I'm going to answer another listener's comment. And by the title, I'm sure you can figure out the subject. Now, in case you're not familiar, what exactly are chemtrails? Well, the term chemtrail is a combination of chemical and trails. It refers to the theory that the trails left behind by aircraft, which are typically called contrails, are actually chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed into the atmosphere by various government or military entities for purposes undisclosed to the general public. The chemtrail conspiracy theory suggests that these trails are not merely water vapor, but contain chemical or biological agents. Proponents believe these substances are being sprayed for a variety of purposes, including weather modification, population control, or even mind control. They argue that normal contrails should dissipate quickly, while chemtrails linger and spread out, forming a cloud-like cover. Recently, a comment was posted on a Season 4 episode, Episode 406, Murderous Deadly Death from Above, The Chemtrail Conspiracy, in which Zion367 asked, Have you changed your mind about the chemtrails? The difference between a contrail and a chemtrail is that a contrail vanishes within a few minutes, and those chemtrails stay for very long, like a veil. So my thoughts on the chemtrail conspiracy is that it's one of the least feasible conspiracy theories running. And that's saying a lot. Now I did reply to this comment on YouTube. So I'm going to expand on that reply here in this episode. It's basically my thoughts on them haven't changed. Contrails are for lack of a better word, clouds. They evaporate quickly when there's little to no cloud cover due to the atmospheric conditions that favor cloudless skies. When conditions favor cloud formation, contrails linger and form into or merge with larger clouds or other contrails. In other words, the difference between short-lived, quickly evaporating trails and lingering, expanding trails isn't their composition, but in the conditions in the atmosphere in which they appear. Now, true, there are some exhaust fume remnants in the contrails that could be bad for you, but no more or less than spew from countless factories around the world. And in fact, factories would be a much more feasible way to pollute the skies intentionally and in a more clandestine fashion for many reasons. First of all, the amount of people who would need to be involved in chemtrails you got to figure just the very basics, pilots, ground crew, air control, flight attendants, and then governments, you know, in the U.S., the federal government, state governments, local governments, and then internationally, the governments around the world. This would make this an absolute impossibility to remain just a conspiracy theory. There would be evidence by now. Now, obviously, one pilot, one flight attendant, or one ground crew member might and probably will be on multiple flights per day, working on them at least. But if you look at the numbers as instances, it's estimated that there's between 8,000 and 20,000 flights in the air around the world at any given time. That means right now, while I'm recording this, somewhere between 8,000 and 20,000 flights in the air around the world. When you're listening to this, 8,000 to 20,000 flights in the air around the world at any given time. Commercial flights have somewhere between two to four pilots, depending on the size of the plane and the amount of passengers. So that's 16,000 to 80,000 pilots in the air right this second. Each plane has somewhere between two and four attendants, maybe more if it's a really big plane, but we'll say two to four. That's another 16,000 to 80,000 flight attendants in the air right this second. That means 32,000 to 160,000 
crew on planes in the sky right this second. And not to mention the 50 ground crew employees that it takes for every plane to get it to the terminal, fueled, maintained, turned around, luggage, all that stuff. So that's 400,000 to a million people at any given time. There's 14,000 air traffic control personnel around the world. So let's not even just talk about right this second. Over the course of a day, on average, there's 100,000 flights. So you take those numbers I just gave you for any given time, you're looking at somewhere between 400,000 to 800,000 flight crew, pilots and flight attendants in the air every day. The ground crew, 50 ground crew for 100,000 flights, that's 5 million per day. Now, the, the chemtrail conspiracy theory first came to light in 1996. That's 28 years. So when you take those numbers for just the day, 5 million ground crew up to 800,000 on a plane, 14,000 air traffic control personnel, you're talking almost 6 million instances per day for almost 30 years that are either complicit or at high risk to learn of or stumble upon this cover-up. 6 million instances per day for 30 years. Now, these numbers don't include airport security, ticket counters, corporate employees, and then you gotta look at who makes the chemicals for the chemtrails. Who makes the distribution devices? Who installs them? Is it in the fuel? Who makes the fuel? How many people would be involved and potentially complicit if it's in the fuel? Look, the, the numbers don't get any smaller. This just gets more and more and more complex. Now, by contrast, you might have 80 to 100 people involved in your average TV show, and they can't keep the next week's plot twist secret to save their lives. But 6 million instances of people interacting directly with flights every day, and there's no evidence. From what I can tell, the only real evidence of chemtrails is how contrails behave in the sky, which, as stated earlier, has to do more with atmospheric conditions than the contents of the chemtrail. And what about the motives? Why would somebody do this? Weather modification? This is actually how the whole thing started. In the mid-90s, there was a paper released by the U.S. Air Force. It was talking about weather modification. In the early 2000s, the Air Force released a fact sheet stating that the chemtrail conspiracy theories were a hoax, and these theories were partly fueled by that 1996 strategy paper from their Air University titled Weather as a Force Multiplier, Owning the Weather in 2025. This paper was response to a military directive to envision a future strategic weather modification system for maintaining U.S. military dominance by the year 2025, but it was clearly identified as fictional. The U.S. Air Force clarified in 2005 that the paper does not reflect current military policy, practice, or capability, and that it's not conducting any weather modification experiments or programs, nor does it plan to in the future. Now, you you got to take that for what it's worth, but yeah, they talked about it as a what-if. So now what if the motive is population control? To me, this makes little sense. If this was being done by elites or militaries or governments, which I guess military and government would be the same, population control would be self-defeating. It all boils down to money. A larger population means a larger workforce, means more taxable income, more sales tax, more permits, more fees, and so on. If you're lowering the population, you're decreasing your potential income. That makes no sense. But maybe it's mind control. And again, there are easier ways to accomplish this. Stop me when this sounds familiar. Social media, advertising, 
social, and political causes. Mind control was implemented as soon as you bought a smartphone, like it or not. You've been trained and modified to shop and buy and pick your side. No chemtrails needed. All of these reasons are why chemtrails are one of the least likely conspiracies going, at least in my opinion. But what do you think? Let me know at podcast at primitiveintelligence.com or leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or Rumble. I'd love to hear what you have to say, either pro or con chemtrail. We'll keep an open mind on all these topics. I always try to. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of the Primitive Intelligence Podcast. Keep a lookout for the upcoming Season 7. That's going to do it for me for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the rest of your week. See ya.